breaking news. The YZF R6, the one beloved by bikers all over the world, is dead. And it is not what everybody expects it to be. And I'm gonna tell you why. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Blissful800. We are a motorcycle content related channel. We do moto vlogs. We do all things that involve talking about motorcycles, the history of motorcycles, motorcycle gear, everything included. Now, I can't just leave you hanging on me saying that the YZF R6 is dead but it is and let's talk about why now for those of you that may be new to the motorcycle world the yzf r6 is a 599 cc inline four cylinder super sport it was first introduced in 1999 as the super sport version of the yzf r1 and it was supposed to be more street oriented than the r1 and it was supposed to be something that was going to be a little bit easier for somebody to daily ride and if you didn't want to go out and get the crazy 999 cc r1 you were able to get something that was very similar to it but at the same time being completely different and being a little bit safer to ride on the roads now when the bike was introduced everybody went nuts and super sports were starting to take over the motorcycle scene you had things like the cbr 600 rr that had come out um, a couple years later the cbr 600 f4i you had the jixers you had the 636s the 0304 uh, 636s at this point every japanese manufacturer was trying to put their foot in the pot when it came to creating a super sport that people could buy and daily drive at the time these bikes were ahead of their class they had all the latest tech they were fast they were insane they sounded great and again for the time they were everything that anybody wanted but also keep in mind that in the early 2000s there weren't a lot of options when it came to sport bikes naked bikes really weren't a prominent thing yet and so you really had a choice between something that was a single cylinder 250 up to a super sport up to an absolute super bike of a 1000 cc so with there not being a lot of options between the 1000s and the 250s that's when everybody decided that they were going to make the super sport class again the 600 cc class and as time goes on the 600s really re like started to refine and they started to get fuel injected instead of carbureted and they started to have all these little gadgets and gizmos they came with abs and they really did become something that was going to be a little bit safer to drive on the road a more comfortable they had more driver aids and they just started to look good and sound good and everything was hunky dory but as the time goes on they really started to die off and it wasn't necessarily because they were poorly engineered motorcycles but more or less because other options started to become available now in 1980 the Jixer 750 had been created. It was, it was a great bike. It was awesome. And as time goes on, it has started to become more and more prominent in the super sport class. Now, three years before the R6 was released, the Suzuki did come out with the Jixer 600. That was going to be their model of the super sport, which kind of prompted everybody else to get on board. Um, everybody else had kind of already created their little super sports, but, but once about the year 2000 hit, every that's when everything started to take off. But I digress. These bikes were fantastic. These bikes were amazing, but but if you've ever ridden one of these super sport classes, you know one thing and that they are not torquey in the slightest. Now, if you are new to motorcycles or you don't know what the term torquey means, it just means that they don't have a lot of bottom end power. For the R6 specifically, it gets a lot of its peak performance above 11,000 RPMs. Now, if you're just cruising on the freeway, you probably aren't cruising at 11,000 RPMs. You're probably cruising somewhere closer around 7,000 RPMs, and that's fine. That's where you want to be. But if you need to get out of a sticky situation, they don't have that torquey punch that you're looking for to get yourself into a safer spot in terms of someone pulling out in front of you or traffic coming to a stop or anything in or anything of that nature. And with that being the case, in later years, other companies started to jump in and create motorcycles that were gonna be a little bit different and a little bit easier to daily drive. Now in 2013, Honda had released the CBR 500R. Now, yes, for those of you that do know motorcycles, you're probably going, listen, Bliss, what are you talking about, dude? The 500 is a twin cylinder. It's not even close to a super sport. Yes, I'm aware, but people were buying motorcycles to commute on people were buying motorcycles to go on long rides on they wanted a motorcycle that was going to be safe that was going to have the punch that they needed to get out of a certain situation and that were going to be comfortable and so a lot of these japanese companies and even companies from europe started to jump onto these, these smaller displacement twin cylinder bikes that had a lot of low-end torque to get up and moving or to get out of a situation but didn't really carry a lot of top speed they didn't carry a lot of high-end torque they were mainly just these little like 
torque monsters. Along with the CBR500R, you have the Ninja 400, you had things like the Yamaha R3 that had come out in 2015, and all of these little bikes, they just, they, they're cheap, they have all the rider aids that some of the bigger bikes have, and they're just more comfortable to commute on. And with that being the case, the Super Sports started to die off in terms of people that were just looking for a bike to commute on. Now, around this time of the 2015 era, you realize that the Super Sports, they're becoming really expensive. The new CBR600RR today is going to run you about $11,000 where you can go get a CBR650R for something much, much cheaper than that. It's going to be somewhere around $8,000, $9,000. Okay, so now you're, now you're thinking we've got smaller bikes that are twin cylinder bikes that don't have any power at all, but are super torquey and easy to commute on, or you have a Super Sport, or you have a 1000. So where's going to be the in-between between something that's maybe not a Super Sport, but not a Super Bike, but has a little bit more power? Well, and that's where the Super Sports have died. You have things like the R7, the CBR650R, the Jixus 750, the SV650, even this uh, Triumph Street Triple 750. You have things like the Aprilia RS660. Our technology has gotten to a point where these bikes can be so incredibly fast without needing to be in the rev range of 14,000 RPMs. The Aprilia RS660 is one of the fastest bikes in its class, and it has a much lower RPM limit than the Super Sports do. And let's be honest, if you're going to be riding your, your Super Sport to work every day, you're probably not going to want to have all of your power up in the 11,000 RPM range. You're going to want to be able to use the power of a bike that may be an inline four, but be detuned a little bit like the CBR650R to get you up to what you need to be, but still have the torque to get you out of that sticky situation. You're going to want something like the Street Triple that's going to be a lot more comfortable. And with all of these intermediate bikes that are coming in to kind of replace these Super Sports, the Naked Styles have been a huge, huge thing lately. Over the last probably 10 years, the naked bikes have started to really take over. You've got things like the MT-03 for absolute beginner commuter bikes, all the way up to the MT-10, which is going to be a monster of a motorcycle. You've got the MT-07, you've got the CB650R, which is going to be the naked version of the CBR650R. You've got things like the SV650. These are all naked bikes that are much easier to commute on. They don't require you to be in high-end RPM limits. And with all of this information that I have just thrown at you they are still making the super sport class bikes they just aren't what they used to be and if you're looking to go really fast on a track that's going to be the bike for you but if you're looking for something that's a daily commuter or something that you can ride around with your friends like 90 percent of people that ride motorcycles are the super sports just don't make any sense anymore and that's partially why the yzf r6 ended up getting discontinued in the year of 2020 you just don't see them anymore they are not practical to be ridden on the streets and if you're looking for something that's going to have a lot of power and a lot of fun but doesn't need to be completely throttled out 24 seven, there are 150 other options for you. Now, I hope this video was informational and did provide you guys with a little bit of knowledge in terms of what maybe you're looking for in your next motorcycle. And as to why the YZF R6 actually did get discontinued and why I personally see that in the short future, it's very possible that we see a lot of the other super sports start to die off. Now, now please note that the R6 is not completely discontinued. You are still able to buy them, but they do not come with a VIN number or any sort of street legal things such as headlights taillights mirrors all that sort of stuff they are strictly track bikes if you want an r6 you're gonna have to buy a previous generation or you're gonna have to buy one and only ride it on the track now i hope this video was informational for anybody that was curious about it this is a little bit of a niche topic but it's something that needs to be said because a lot of people are questioning as to why these super sports are just not as prominent as they used to be so if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Super Sport class or what you think your favorite bike is. Also, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It helps me out. We're trying to grow the channel. And remember, life is bliss.